What was the situation at pri Priority when now he, he, he the boss, he run his company like he see fit, but didn't Priority have an issue with him putting out albums uh, as often as he well, wanted to? Well, it was, it was Priority and their, and their code, and they, were, they had to deal with BMI. Mm -hmm. And so what they did, the people from BMI was over in London, so they had a, they had a structure in which they put albums out. They yeah. they release one album a year mm -hmm. from a company, yep. and they had take all the other albums and stack like they them. They used up. to do that old shit. Yeah, that mm -hmm. old school shit. So I'm sitting in there with P, and I do numbers. Mm -hmm. I said, P, are we making this off of this album? Because Ice Cream Man first thing and sold thirty five thousand. That was nothing. Mm -hmm. But as the months went on, it started selling fifty, seventy five, one hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. It went up. It climbed and climbed and climbed. Mm -hmm. And then once we saw the kind of revenue we were generating. We just did the numbers on it and say, well, damn, man, if we put out five of these or 10 of these in a year, you know how much money they're fucking horse? Mm -hmm. And he was like, sure, there. That's when we put the production team together. Mm -hmm. He's by the pound, worked them around the clock. Mm -hmm. uh, K. Luke worked them around the clock. All the producers we had, XL, worked them around the clock. Mm -hmm. And then we start grabbing all these groups and putting the albums together on them. Because we already had it set up for the next ones to come out mm -hmm. in, in the Ice Cream Man. So after the Ice Cream Man, it was set up for all these other releases to come out. Mm -hmm. So we decided to do them all in one year. We put out like 14 albums in one year. And the people had a meeting with us. They flew across the water when we were trying to do it. It was like, uh, we sat at a big conference table, all us in there, me and Pete. And then Brian Turner, Mark, all the owners and shit in there. So they're like, listen, Y'all want to do this, but you, this is not done in the industry. This is not how you do business. And this is what you need to do, this, that, and the other. And P set up, stood up in there and told him, he said, you know, y'all problem is, y'all think white is right. But white ain't motherfucking right today. It's my shit. I own it. I take this motherfucker, walk across the street, and go to, uh, uh, there was uh, at the time. Capital. No, not Capital. Uh, no baby that was on. Uh, Universal. Universal. Uh, Universal. Mm -hmm. He said, I walk right over there. They call me every day. He said, a motherfucker from Universal call me every day. <laughs> he said, y'all dang white right, right, but that shit ain't happening today. Yeah. This is my yeah. shit. This is what I'm going to do. And if y'all don't want to rock with that, then y'all do not rock with me. Yeah. And right now, I'm holding y'all company up. Man, I had done the numbers. We on 12% of the market share by the time we put out them 12, 14 albums that year. Priority was going under when we came down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And nobody, they had nobody that ever cube, and he had fell off one seven minute record at Mac 10. Yeah. And that was it. That shit, that was going down. Because at some mm -hmm. point, they was paying y'all to shit, put they artists, you know, put the new oh, that, right. on they artists. That's, mm -hmm. what they, that's exactly what they was doing. Mm -hmm. let, let, lending that tank to them. You know, yep. we had enough clout, we could lend motherfucker respect. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. So, how did you feel when when P stood up and said that? Man, that was one. Now, that was like a number one proudest moment. Yeah. At the time, because for me it was empowering just seeing a black man stand up to the establishment and uh, let white folks know that hey, this our shit. You mm -hmm. know, and ain't nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. So either you rock with it, you roll with it, or you get rolled over. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, "Come on, boys, let's go." We left and walked out the room. So when we got out the door, I hugged that nigga tight as I could. I said, boy, that's the most powerful shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I, said, man, I, I said, man, listen to me. I love you the rest of me, your life. I love you now, but for that, you can't do no wrong in my eyes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what they say. Yeah, real talk. <laughs>